Hi, welcome to This Week in Ames. I'm Susan Guiazda. On today's show, we check in with the Ames Public Works Department. My guest today is Rudy Castor, who was recently promoted in the city of Ames. You probably had last seen him when he was our transportation planner for the uh, Ames area Metropolitan Planning Organization. Uh, Rudy, tell us a little bit about your new position. Uh, thanks, Susan. Uh, happy to be here on, on the show today. Um, so yeah, you're right. I was pri previously in my position, I was a transportation planner for the Ames area MPO. Um, and that kind of you know, entailed just oversight of just transportation planning in the area. Um, my new position, which is civil engineer two now, um, still within the Public Works Department, um, primarily focusing on capital improvement projects in our um, capital improvement plan. Um, and those basically entail uh, working on design, uh, whether in-house or with a, a consultant firm, um, to design street reconstruction projects, utility improvement projects, um, just the kind of variety that we see in our capital improvements plan. So. Yeah, really a hands-on position. One of the things that um, you and I have been working on the last couple of months is uh, when those projects are determined, uh, there's a lot of public notification and public input. Um, talk a little bit about the process when you've identified a project. Yeah, okay, uh, so, you know, City Council, we kind of work with the development of the CIP as staff members and then uh, Council eventually approves that CIP in our budget and identifies locations for street improvements, utility improvements. Um, once those are identified, uh, staff will work on those, whether it's in-house design, uh, we have a, a couple uh, CAD techs on staff. Um, we either work on those due to the, determine if they're able to work on those um, in-house on the complexity of the project or if we have to actually hire a consulting firm to kind of help us with that complexity of the project. So um, once we kind of establish that and how we're going to go about that process, um, we instantly hit the ground running trying to get the public in involvement, um, adjacent property owners, resi residences, and uh, pro business owners. Just trying to get their input so they're w aware of the project that's going to be coming down um, to do improvements in their, in their neighborhoods. So. So some of the ones that we've already um, uh, let neighbors know about, uh, one of them was 24th Street, we had West Street, and a more recent one, uh, Ridgewood. Mm -hmm. And um, part of the process is, um, I think it's direct mail to those people who are going to see those trucks right out in front of their property. That's right, Susan. We do do direct mailings, um, letters in the mail to them, uh, notifications on our webpage. Uh, you help us out uh, quite a bit with that, doing those um, press releases to the newspaper as well, um, as well as Channel 12 here. So, And then you host a meeting, which I think is great. That's when you can really get the dialogue going, and that's when um, people who have special um, accessibility needs can talk to you about a project, who have specific ideas on maybe what needs to be improved or what's problematic about, about their neighborhood, can really share those concerns with you. Exactly. You know, that's the opportune time when we're going through the design of the project. Um, we're able to incorporate those issues that we're not fully aware of. They, these residents are living there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so they, they see problems that we may not even know of. Um, and so we ask for them to bring those uh, to our attention and then we can address those properly. So yep, it's, uh, it's very key to um, have those meetings as well and just kind of introduce ourselves and get to know the residents and they get to know us and uh, feel comfortable with us in the project, eventually with the goal of, of having that uh, ownership in the project as well, since they had some vital information and input to it. So. so for example, if you lived up north, 24th Street is a fairly uh, well-driven uh, street mm -hmm. and um, I think at your meeting you, uh, we talked about this this idea that we threw out some ideas of maybe uh, experimenting with some different kind of street designs and the feedback from the neighbors was one they had gotten some misinformation uh, but also um, understanding the role that parking played on that street was really important yeah I mean we just try to answer questions and, and clarify information that we send out um, sometimes it's it's just miscommunicated, and so we'd, we want to make sure that they're aware of what the, the project is going to entail. Um, and like you said, uh, there was a question on whether parking was going to stay or not. Uh, currently, there's parking on both sides on 24th Street. Um, it's a two-lane uh, arterial street here in town, so heavily heavy traffic. Um, and so the goal was actually to look at water quality 
improvements to the project, not, not necessarily change any of the parking or whatnot. So that was kind of a, a misconceived uh, mm -hmm. message there. But we uh, worked through it, and, uh, and the residents are very happy to um, implement some of those water quality improvements on the project. So. so talk a little bit about that because that was interesting. Again, all, our waterway, uh, our streets act as a water conveyance system. Uh, a lot of parked cars on the streets can have a lot of oil and drippings and that goes right into the storm sewers. I thought the street plans for 24th Street were really innovative. They had some little bump outs. Mm -hmm. These bump outs, uh, we call them kind of water retention areas, allow that storm water that's running down the street, you know, picking up that soil um, debris or whatnot, drippings from your car, um, and kind of gives it an opportunity for that water to infiltrate into the soil through a natural process instead of directly piping it to our storm system, which eventually goes directly to our rivers and streams. Hence the concept of improving the water quality from that. And is that maybe a tool you might use on other streets? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we uh, we kind of feel like city of Ames, we want to implement that into our projects. We, we require that for our developers to do that with any site development that they do as a private developer. Um, so we basically want to uh, practice what we preach, you know. So we, we look at that, those opportunities on all of our street projects from here on out. Where are there basically low-hanging fruit opportunities to implement those? Well, and also aesthetically, they're very attractive. Exactly. You're seeing more and more of the rain gardens and the bioretention cells and, and the native plantings, which basically help with that water quality and exactly aesthetically pleasing as well. So one of the other um, uh, street projects you brought up recently, and again, um, I'm getting this information probably four to six months out before any kind of uh, construction is actually occurring. You're getting that feedback early, but one of them was uh, Southeast 5th Street, Right. East of Duff, kind of in between Sports Authority and the Super Walmart. Exactly. Um, basically, it's actually a dead end street. It's primarily the access for Super Walmart and, and a primary access for Sports Authority, Petco, Pizza Hut, Advanced Auto there, as well as Entire Care. So, primarily, it's, it's a heavy commercial focused um, area, um, mostly businesses. Um, so, they will be the most impacted, as well as the overall users of those businesses. Um, so basically that project is going to entail, as you said, the perimeters are from South Duff to the east, um, doing a crack and seat treatment of that pavement um, and then doing an asphalt overlay on that pavement. Um, we understand that it is primarily, a, a, you know, the main access for several of those businesses. Um, so to accommodate that, we're going to be doing that under kind of traffic control, con under traffic conditions. So closing one lane, shifting traffic head to head, and then vice versa as we kind of progress across that full width of the street. Do you ever envision it being totally closed? Uh, no, because of just basically it's the primary access for those businesses and closing them down um, is not something that they are, are wanting to see. So we're trying to be accommodating as we can. Um, yes, there may be a temporary kind of restriction an hour or so or, or more, um, but we definitely do provide notice to those businesses of when that's going to happen and then work with them on kind of when it, when's an opportune time during their business schedule to do those if we had to limit you on access. So, Well, and obviously, you know, it just takes some patience with any kind of street construction project and then the end result is always worth the wait. Right. I, we understand it's an inconvenience and we do appreciate uh, everyone working with us on trying to make it a, as successful a project as we can. Um, yes, road construction is... It, is a headache and an eyesore at times, but um, the final product I think is well worth it um, and, and it gives kind of a, a much better curb appeal to the businesses and property owners. So, so Rudy, you mentioned the CIP, that's the Capital Improvements Plan. Um, where can people get information about these projects if they have one in their neighborhood or want to see maybe where they are uh, in the future for reconstruction? Yeah, they can definitely. Uh, the city webpage is, is, has a lot of information on there as well as our public uh, works specific uh, page on there, um, the capital improvement plan, as well as we have kind of a construction update webpage as well as a design project update. That's kind of fairly new. I'm, I've been tracking that and just kind of letting people know it, that they can go there and just kind of see where this project is in its design, who to contact if it's not myself, um, if it's another staff member in our department for that project. Um, and just kind of gives them a, a basically a timeline of, of when that project and is going to be let um, for bid for uh, bidders to put bid on that. Um, then we award it, and eventually we will start construction. So it's just kind of information. Everybody likes to just stay in the loop, and we try to provide that 
through that uh, through the web page as well as is a primary one as well as just direct contact to our public works department um, phone call or an email um, I'm sure Derek will put that up there uh, for people <laughs> to reach out to so. two three nine five one six zero you can call our public works department directly uh, we'll put your email address on there so people can get in touch with you as well absolutely and also obviously our website at cityvames.org okay. always a good place to start Rudy thank you so much for being on the show happy to be here Susan happy holidays thank you happy holidays to you and that's a great reminder um, City Hall and most city offices will be closed on Thursday, January 1st for the New Year's holiday. I hope you have a wonderful New Year. Stay, sell, stay safe and uh, be sure to tune in next week for This Week in Ames. <laughs>